I don't want to go to prison. They pee in a cup and throw it at you. Instead, I can go play a video game about escape in prison called The Escape is Two. It's from Team 17 Digital and Moldy Tooth. Okay, I almost mispronounced that. Studios. Mm-hmm. It's done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks. What is it? Craft, steal, brawl, escape. It's time to bust out of the toughest prisons in the world as you return to the life of an inmate in The Escape is Two, now with multiplayer. Uh, the devs did send us some keys, so thank you very much for that. We're going to give it the chair QA session. What is it? It's where we take a look at a game. We've got the three of us. We're very different people. We have different opinions on what we consider a good game. And yeah, we uh, talk about it. We do a little QA that maybe the devs should have done before releasing it. And then we give you a final score based on these chairs. One means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. Four cheese, Four cheese Four means cheese. that it's a marzing. Yeah, there you go. A marzing. Good word. And we also got our categories of doom, which we apply these to. Makes with the working. Shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So let's kick this off. I think we'll, we'll, we'll hand it off to the guest set first. Atomic Ass. Did the Escape is 2 make with the working? Yeah, it, uh, it worked. I uh, ran it on my box of Arch with the dual Xeons. And I also you know, it's bad it enough that my, you uh, run a goddamn Xeon for desktop and you put Arch on and you wonder why shit's wrong. I just You just need to <laughs> tap out on that one, buddy. Uh, I also ran it on the Asus uh, laptop. Uh, both of these had uh, uh, NVIDIA graphics. I also tried to run it on uh, my uh, Dell Inspiron 11. It wouldn't get into game on that one, but uh, that's just because it doesn't have enough memory. But it, it did give uh, playable frame rates in the menu, at least. But I'm not going to uh, ding in a chair because they do say in the system requirements it requires four gigs of RAM. So I'm going to give it four chairs. Jordan. Oh, what about you, Ben? All right. Uh, if you want to know how it runs on the Ryzen 1700, powered by 980, displayed at UHD 3840 by 2160, it's not 4K. Um, hey, man, everything ran like it should. It maintains a solid 70 plus FERPS at that 3840 by 2160s. But then again, look at it. It kind of should. There is a little bit of graphical herky jerk when you're moving in certain environments, but not enough to write home about. Maybe send a body part or two, an ear, maybe a nose, but don't put a letter in with it. Uh, yeah, no issues. This is on Ubuntu 1710 with four point whatever the hell kernels out this week, low latency. No issues. Everything works. Separate X screens. I love it. I'd give it four. Canadian. Yeah, yes, German. Um, yeah, no, on uh, Fedora 26, 64 bit with the uh, GTX 980 and the i7 6700K, no issues. Ran in excess of like a couple thousand frames a second at 4K, as is to be expected. No, no, no issues. Four chairs. So that's four chairs for the um, makes with the working. How about shiny and sounds? I'll, I'll take this one. Hmm. I mean, like, the pixel art is decently done. It's not like they, they went to like Sprite Forge or whatever and just ripped a bunch of assets, but. I mean, it's it's nothing special. Like when when I think of like three or four chair sprite work, I think stuff like Alboy or um, I'm I'm space or like Super Brothers, Sword and Sorcery, or stuff like that. This this is just kind of middle of the road. Combined with combined with the fact that like the the soundtrack here isn't I don't know I didn't I didn't I wasn't really into it. Um, it's it basically exists so that it makes noises so that you know when you need to like go to the next place so that your suspicion doesn't get too high. Um, I mean, it, it looks fine for what it is, but it basically just gets the job done, in my opinion. It doesn't really do anything to push the push the boundaries. That's the word I'm looking for. Cheese, cheesy boundaries. Over here, man, uh, check it out. I, I kind of thought a little bit differently about it with... Uh, yeah, because, like, personally, I, I think this is some next-level hipster pixel animation. It's about to say this because I rather enjoyed looking at the damn thing. It is something in the way it moved. Giggity does have definitely have a strong, uh, this is what I think I remember SNES games looking like because I've only played them in an emulator and didn't realize they didn't really look like this, but I'm going to make my game like this anyway. Kind of dig it. Kind of dig it. Uh, 
When it comes to audio, kind of with Jordan on that, I ended up slayering the audio after the initial tutorial when I realized there's not a lot there for me, but I'll throw it a solid three, give it some love. Yeah, like Ven, I uh, I agree with the uh, the SNES influence. I, I think it's it's very nice. Um, personally, I like soundtracks that that are right in the middle. You, you don't you don't force me to mute it and and put the Slayer on, but I can forget about it when I when I quit the game, so I'm not buying the soundtrack separately. So for me, I give it four chairs. All right, well, that's three chairs for shining the sounds. How about the controls, Ben? Do you, do you play this with the keyboard or the controller? Uh, yeah, man, I broke out this. The uh, Frenchie picked it up. I'm still using it. The Areola controller, the Steam controller, you know it. It's all spiteful and shit. Kind of impressed. But nope, not kind of. Fucking impressed. That's what I am because, uh... Yeah, this thing passed with the uh, flaming hot Cheetos, like right out of the box, 100%. Everything's logically mapped, didn't have to fuck around with that. And it was a 100% sit back experience like a game like this should be. Uh, I was kind of worried that, oh shit, maybe I'm going to have to do a custom controller mapping with the Steam. Mm-mm, nothing like that, man. It just dug it and easy to play. Everything moved when I booped it, up, down, left, right, menu item selection. Yeah, 100%. It works. Straight four, bitch. Yeah, um, yeah um, I had some issues because I have uh, this this boy here paired as a uh, Steam controller. This is a DualShock 4. Um, it, for whatever reason, did not seem to like whatever mapping I gave it because like, if you hit the triangle button, it would start the player 2, which was really dumb. Um, so I, I switched back to keyboard and mouse. Everything's like logically laid out. Uh, some of the stuff is a little weird because, like Ben said, it is meant to be played on a controller. So, like, the, the workout mini games or the reading mini games all kind of depend or sort of expect you to have shoulder buttons, which you don't. But it, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to, and the prompts, if you have a controller plugged in, don't show up as keyboard only. So, again, a little confusing, but once you get that all sorted, it works fine. I'll give I'll give it three cheers. What, 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 what about you, at Atomic? Yeah, I, I didn't even realize this had controller support at first. Uh, so I just went keyboard and mouse. And I, I found it was uh, logically laid out. Um, now that I know it has controller support, I might go back and use it. But uh, I'm going to give the, the keyboard and mouse the four chairs. All right. All right, well, that's uh, three chairs for control. And to put a bow on it. Ooh, um, it's a subjective did, category. Did you have fun, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is kind of a mixed bag, man, because for this game, uh, The Escapist 2 falls into the if I had more time category of business. It's a hipster pixel top down open world ish in a closed environment. Kind of unique, a little bit different there. It has crafting. So meh, boo, don't like that. Fuck crafting. Uh, it's kind of fetch questy, you know, initially. 100% on that. Uh, not my favorite thing, but it's something to do. It's like a top-down Skyrim, just a big-ass soundbox, just kind of shrunk down. Then again, you know, it has the one thing that I genuinely enjoy in any type of video game, and that's the ability to have multiple ways to solve the same problem, the same puzzle. And this, this Escapist 2 absolutely delivers that. So what I got to say is I'll give it a Strider, with the two, but I'm going to throw an asteroid, an astro on it, because this Escapist 2 is 100% desert, stuck on a desert island type game. I could have a lot of fun with this, and it does boil down to if you have the time and mix that in with a really good setback experience, you'd probably have three, but I would have to have that set time to put into it because it is something that is quite involved. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I thought for sure that it's going to be one of those things where I can like go and bust out a couple levels. Uh, but no, every level takes it in excess of a couple hours because you got to go gather all the materials. You got to like make copies of guards' keys and like figure out what the actual escape routes actually are. They have some neat ones too that are only available via multiplayer, which is kind of neat because you had some additional variety. Hey, we want to try this kind of prison break. 
It's pretty neat. You can also, it also does the Borderlands thing where you can just join games in progress. But really, my experience playing with it, playing with it for like two hours is it's it's just okay. Like mm-hmm. at, at at its core, I think it's an interesting challenge. Tr- given given literally nothing. Go talk to people, curry favors, gather all the resources required to break out of prison. What? Here's, a, here's something I forgot to like put in the notes to ask both of you. If this mm-hmm. entire game was like, say, triple A done, not first person or third person, you you couldn't pull me out of this if you were the king of England. It's something about just being a top down pixel game. Because, I mean, everything's Maybe. there. Because when you first look at it, you're like, this couldn't be very deep. It's got a lot, a lot of business, a lot of shit going on. I think I just wanted to ask I, you guys that. Honestly, I think I think I if it was uh, do, doing like first person or whatever, unless you did like some Metal Gear Solid Solid on radar, a lot of the stealth aspects sort of require you to have that top down view because you need to know to like get to the right place when there are people nearby. Well, think Hitman, uh, which I guess would make it a lot more challenging and a lot more uh, of an authentic prison break scenario, mm-hmm. As, especially like after you pick fights, people just like drag you to the infirmary and then you just get up. I and like also considering there are missions where you basically just have to go shiv a motherfucker <laughs> um, or soap them. Yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. I, I, I used the screw. I was using the screwdriver just because it's like shank, shank, bitch. Um, but yeah, no. Show title. <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's shank shank bitch uh but like a lot of uh, there's a lot of grinding involved because you gotta like you you gotta you gotta show up to the places where they expect you to be and once they confirm that you're there you can go fuck off and do whatever you want but you gotta kind of plan it out so that you can always show up and go do the thing other thing you want to do which is problematic when you're trying to find resources like you you can you can do the crafty bits to like prison ghetto engineer tools that you need to escape. And a, a lot of that is just like finding out who actually has what, which is a, what, where a lot of your time is going to be spent. Um, like going through the crafting tree and like bringing up your stats so that you can actually build the stuff. Mm-hmm. It's kind of grindy and not in the way that really speaks to me as a player. Like I, like I said, at its core, it's an interesting challenge. And maybe maybe if we played some multiplayer, it'd be a lot more fun because then you could stratemergize and do some of the more advanced um, advanced stuff. But it's it, at the end of the day, it's a fuck around simulator, and it's not really doing much for me. It's competently done. It's not a bad game. It's I just can't find it all that fun. We'll give it two cheers. Yeah, I would agree with uh, Jordan that uh, uh, multiplayer would probably make this more fun. Uh, now, I was going to give it one chair for the fun, but I figured out something that wasn't documented anywhere that I could find. And that is when you go on a quest uh, or you accept a quest from one of the other inmates, you don't necessarily get the quest item, even if the dialogue makes it seem like he's handing it to you right then and there. Uh, a lot of times it will be like, hey, here, take this paper clip. And... You're like, uh, inventory, uh, there's no paperclip in my inventory. You actually have to go and find the... It's like, hi, I see you're trying paper. to shank a bitch. Uh, would you like assistance with that? <laughs> like, shut up, Clippy. <laughs> yeah. No, well, that it, it, inter- it's interesting that you bring that up, too. Um, because, like, there was, there was one mission where it's like, uh, stop this guy from painting a mural. And I thought, okay, the easiest way to do it is to, the way I solve all my problems, with violence. Mm-hmm. And so I beat the shit out of him. And the quest didn't complete. And then, like, a day later, it just randomly finished. I'm like, what? Because I guess he just, like, didn't take the job that week. And it, it it's kind of... I, I don't know. Maybe, ask you can agree or disagree with me. It's kind of obtuse sometimes what exactly you need to do unless it's, like, go there and kill this person. Yeah. a lot. Uh, that's what I was trying to get at, is some of the stuff is just obtuse. Um, I spent a, an hour figuring out that I had to go to the little clue piece icon on the map just to get the the little piece that I needed that it seemed like he was going to hand it to me. Um, but I'll still give it uh, two chairs for the fun. It, it might have gotten more if uh, if we'd gotten around to the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's two chairs with an asteroid for the uh, for the fun segment. 
we tally all that nonsense up and uh we get oh sh- shock and awe shock and awe the escapists to gets uh gets the three chairs so that's uh let's mm-hmm. uh, check it out uh do you guys got any final parting words about uh this game mm, let me check something right quick uh all right. What I was checking was the price on Brad. Nineteen ninety nine. Is it worth that? If this is your jam, baby. Yes. If if you're just prison curious, go commit a minor felony and just play the home game. So save yourself that twenty quid. You're gonna need it. You know when you call Saul. <laughs> yeah. Just get 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 house arrested. Mm-hmm. Just get. Yeah. yeah they they uh, they one 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 home security bracer didn't do it, so they gotta give me two. Yep. I, I don't know for ni- 19 bucks. Yeah, definitely. If you're going to be like in a place without internet for a while, then this will probably be worth it because it will at least keep you busy. Um, but I can't give it a solid recommend for that price. And it goes on sale and it goes in humble bundles. Um, enough that you could probably get it for a reasonable amount of money, but the asking price is just a little high. Ask. Yeah, I, I would say it's earned its three chairs, but only. Only if you if it's really up your alley, 